Well, I'm moving the Alien series per month, so uh, now seems like a good time to dig into Aliens. And after all, it's April 16th, and... Hey, April 16th? Oh, fuck, I gotta get the 420 special done! Uh, can, can I say that Xenomorph heads look kind of like bombs? Fuck, no! Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Decker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And as I've done one for the last two years, I may as well keep the tradition going with a 420 special of... Um... Sex Pot. Sounds good, right? Sex Pot, starring Roland Perry and Seth Adam Cassell, is the lovely story of a couple of stoners who must embark on an epic journey to finally lose their virginity. Which will involve laughter, naked women, fruits, and vegetables in this instant classic by the Asylum. The Asylum? Fucking hell, no! I've got plenty of other movies to review for 420. Like, uh, um. Did that. Did that. Well, they were probably high while making this. Fine, we'll watch Sex Pot. An asylum movie, therefore you know this is ripping off something, so I'll just put it out there that a lot of the proposed themes have more than a slight resemblance to American Pie, plus even the back of the box brags in its quote, in the tradition of half-baked. A oh, fucking brilliant, a sex-themed asylum ripoff of half-baked! What the fuck are they doing, watching my show for ideas? Well, anyway, let's take a look at Sex Pot and hope that the asylum wasn't getting high off their own supply. No, the opens to gratuitous cleavage, spliced in with one of our main guys for this journey, Rollin Perry, who plays... Spanky? The fuck kind of a name is Spanky? Joshua, he only answers to Spanky now, remember? And why is that? Because he's never had sex and he spanks his meat all day. Right, so considering this is the only explanation we get for it, why the fuck does he only answer to Spanky? What kind of self-hating douchebag demands to be referred to with a name that celebrates his relationship with his right hand? Though that does explain how he's such great friends with Mert over here, played by Seth Cassell. I got the house to ourselves, man. And I've got the pool. <laughs> Because masturbation is awesome! What the fuck is going on here? The guy even has a shirt that says I love to beat my meat. Is this how the asylum thinks that men regard masturbation? Oh, I love jerking off. Yeah, beating my meat. Hell yeah, show that sausage who's boss. Mm, nothing like a little me time. Or a lot of me time. Have my prayers finally been answered? Despite their love of themselves, strangely, they are very upset about their apparent virginity. Dude, 69, man? That's pretty much second base, lame -o. That doesn't count. It so does count. Okay. Did you orgasm? Yeah. While she was in the room? No. Okay. Well then you, my friend, have not had sex. Yeah, being naked and involved in sexual activity doesn't count as sex. Having sex doesn't count as sex, but achieving an orgasm while in a room with another person does. I mean, otherwise, how are these two guys supposed to go around the whole movie having sex the entire time and be able to complain about still being virgins? And now for the porn. I want to fuck you so bad. Of oh, fucking course, it's a hardly low-quality asylum porn to boot. This is how the film decides to introduce us to the first major female role, Pinky, played by Lindsay Ahern, who evidently is an ex-girlfriend of Mert's older brother. This chick giving you a boner yet? Nope. This film remotely entertaining? Nuh-uh. Thus they switch gears, getting a couple of beers, and... <laughs> Acting like complete fucking idiots before they're even drunk because... Hey, you gotta put this film's 3D to good use, right? Oh, yeah, did I forget to mention that? This was fucking filmed in 3D. Anyway, as naked, horny women aren't enough for these inexplicably desensitized wankers, Mert has the brilliant idea to peek into his neighbor's window to get their rocks off. Stop looking at women through windows, Spanky. Look at me. I'm all you need. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a sex-themed asylum ripoff of A Beautiful Mind? So, Spanky declines, but Mert strikes back hard. No wonder you've never gotten laid. You're gay! Got the debate skills of a goddamn eight-year-old. This is so effective, even though it's clear that this is a horribly stupid idea that will likely lead to their deaths, he still goes along with it. I'm sorry, man. I gotta go for it. Sure, why not hanging from a ledge with another guy? Breaking three or more laws at once, what could possibly make this situation any sexier? I got it! The Asylum are run by a bunch of space aliens who are trying desperately to figure out what makes humans tick, and we still have a long fucking way to go. Obviously, she hears this, and oh, how silly. They can't run away because their window shut itself. So we get yet another instance of the people in this movie acting nothing at all like real people, as the woman pleasantly invites them back into her apartment, so they can watch the two of them make out. Despite the fact that on top of all of this, there's no reason a lesbian couple would ever want to be with some guys. Bye, women. The scene still really doesn't make any sense. Of course, they hit the guys with a super pepper spray, which also causes their lingerie to materialize back onto their bodies. But even worse, now Mert is suffering from a lack of release. Don't you ever run out of semen? Nope. Despite already releasing um, less than two minutes ago, did the writers ever have sex? Because they seem really in the dark as to exactly how things work down there. So, new crisis. They must find more porn. Because that was working so well before? And they succeed in finding something just out of frame, which evidently consists of a porno and an incredibly small stash of weed. Pot and porno in the mail? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's put it back. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> just now he's realizing how fucked up these asylum movies get. Without further ado, they sit down to get high and watch the Caribbean porno, starring Teresa Duvo as Mama Love. Of course, she also played Wanda in The Spiritual Divide by Urban Christian Entertainment. For the record, at least four of the women involved in this movie also were doing wholesome Christian films. And not just faith films, so... Damn. Never mind stories about the horrors of secularism for a moment. On with Pornception. Mama Love informs our duo, as well as the audience, that the bag of weed they're smoking just so happens to be a special aphrodisiac pot. Because, you know, along with all aphrodisiacs, it's a placebo effect and doesn't work unless you think it's working. I could fuck Martha Stewart's mom. Yeah? Well, I'd fuck Martha Stewart's dog. And her mom. And her dad, man. You know what? Never mind, let's just assume that's the weed talking. Naturally, they get the munchies, and then the asylum writers kick in asking, Hey, you know how funny it was in American Pie when the dude fucked the pie? You know it must be even funnier? Two dudes fucking the entire contents of the refrigerator! I'm fucking a bear oh, oh. And I thought I liked Philadelphia cream cheese. Fade out for an undisclosed period of time, and we get the hilarious, awkward awakening. Dude, did you just suck my dick? No. Oh! It's funny, cause it's... It's... Nah, nah, it's, it's not funny. Anyway, after they clean up and take that whole dick-in-mouth thing pretty well considering their age, the girls come a knockin'. We came here to apologize. Really? They're so sorry that the guys looked through their window jerkin' off. The fuck? They decide to make it up to the sexual predators by inviting them to a beach party in Malibu. Here's the address. Just bring something to drink. You know the craziest part out of all of this? They're being completely honest! There's no ulterior motive or future revenge plot that's gonna pop up. The two creepiest bastards on the planet just got invited to a party with tons of women. That can't be. I never received my invitation. Which brings us to the big goal of this film. If these two nitwits bring the sex weed to the party, they can fuck the hot neighbor girls. Great, their plan is to drug them. You know, these two guys aren't getting any more likable. I picked up my brother's handheld. Man, it's a GPS and a cell phone. The movie's from 2009! iPhones had been on the market for two years already! New crisis, though. Their car is covered in gorilla shit. Courtesy of Mert's brother's ex-girlfriend. So they must take it to the most understaffed bikini car wash in this country. Come on, girls! Let's do this! 
You're the only two on set. There are no extras. I guess the asylum figured out it was actually kind of expensive to convince a bunch of women to have rubbed their tits in gorilla shit. And yet they never figured out that that's not exactly erotic. So they get high for no reason other than to stretch out this scene of boobs and shit. I'm sure plenty of you out there are wondering exactly how it all looks in 3D. Well, kind of like this. Don't worry about not having 3D glasses with you. It looks the same with or without them. Red and green and painful double vision. I'm gonna rub them. Take these pills. But if you do buy the movie, it comes with two sets of 3D glasses. You know, in case you have a friend that you want to lose. Also, for no good fucking reason, Spanky takes some mystery pills from Mert, but oh no, they happen to be Viagra! So by the time they stop to buy some booze, he begins suffering from erectile function. Oh god, it's hard. Oh god. Maybe try pointing it up so you're not bashing his head into the back of the zipper? I mean, did the writer of this movie even have a dick? They seem pretty lost when it comes to describing how they function. As Mert fails at buying tequila due to his lack of ID... How about chewing tobacco and energy drinks? Yet, somehow tobacco is no problem. The two of them split up in search of someone to go and buy it for them. So, yay. Filler. Exciting. And we are introduced to two whores. Well, not being derogatory, that's their occupation. They're prostitutes. Strawberry, played by Rana Davies, and Michelle Pennick as Princess. Despite him having no reason to go with them, and prostitutes not normally having to kidnap their Johns, they take him mostly against his will to relieve his aching dick with... another dick. Spanky, what the fuck are you doing? That's a dude! So this... isn't what they wanted. I'm just trying to figure it out. This script, it's really hard to tell. Guess not, as they run like hell, but don't worry, Mert got someone to buy them tequila. Are you what kidding? What the fuck? Okay, as far as I can tell, they've just been establishing that these two guys are idiots over and over and over again. Don't worry, though. Shitty writing is here to see them through the trials ahead, as the slutty duo buy them their tequila in exchange for a ride across town. Before trying your impressive 3D shots, maybe you want to focus on a part of the car other than the name that you had to duct tape over to avoid getting sued. A short drive that painfully forces the love interest of Princess down our throats, cleaning her character image up because, hey, this is her first day as a prostitute, so she's not a prostitute. Which makes as much sense as saying I didn't have a job in fast food until at least the fourth paycheck. There's that motherfucker who stole our money. You gave him the money. He stole the tequila. At that storefront. What the fuck are you doing driving around in circles? This light burst of speed summons a police car from the inconvenient dimension, so Spanky tosses the weed out the window. What? What the fuck? No fucking fuck! Fuck! Hey, you got a cop! And for once, I agree with Mert. You think the cop didn't just see that numb nuts? Or incredibly sensitive swollen nuts? Which brings us to Deirdre Lyons as the hilariously named Officer Bendover. Oh, bend over. Like you're having sex with her. Oh, how zany. This is a fishing license. Right. Almost as wacky and crazy as the fact that she is one of the most mundane characters on set. They don't even mention her in her name, that's just how she's credited. So hilarious. Despite the fact that they obviously smell very strongly of marijuana, she's also terrible at her job and lets them go no problem. Thus, they now must search for their long-lost bag of weed. This search leads to another oh-so-silly set made of pure comedy gold. It's my little brother's birthday party. He's turning three. Break, you stupid bitch! Who the fuck are you? The fuck? Is he turning three for the second or third time now? For no rhyme or reason, the kid's mother starts coming on to Spanky. Okay, let me guess. You're gonna get me all worked up and excited and then throw something disgusting in my face. Of course! At the subterranean party, Spanky's investigation leads him to a one-on-one -on -one encounter with the Skank. Which is not very specific, given this movie. I want you to take your cock out and stuff it into my mouth. And then I want you to lick my pussy like a lollipop. Can you do that? Not unless you're equipped like Strawberry back there. Did the writer have any idea how either sex's genitalia function? Mert, on the other hand, tracks down the weed. Or what's left of it. Only three left. Three left? What the fuck did you do with the rest of them? I sold them! 
you ask me, I'm impressed she was able to squeeze four joints out of that fucking penny bag they started with. So to lighten the mood, Mert assaults a child and steals the drugs back. Don't let this get you down. Prepare to laugh as we learn that Spanky has been fucking his sister all this time. What are we gonna tell mom and dad? Don't, Don't tell, tell them! I'm sure they'd understand. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised to find out their mom and dad are brother and sister. It would explain a lot. You're coming home now, okay? No, now? you can't tell me what to do, virgin. Are you really able to throw that insult at him after he just fucked you? Spanky is horrified that he just had sex with his sister, but Mert is there to pull a technicality out of his ass and make him feel better. Did you spooge on her? No! Okay, did she spooge on you? No! Okay then, you didn't have sex! Oh yes he fucking did! Well, he didn't finish, but he started, and spent a considerable amount of time in what is considered having sex. I think what you mean to say is, according to the plot, you have to still be a virgin, so let's throw a no-true-Scotsman fallacy at this and move on. Before they can get out of there, though, Pinky shows up. Yeah, there was a call with her earlier, when she wasn't wearing any clothes for some reason. And another one is now completely off-screen, both to establish that she knows where they are. Except they've been lugging around that big, obvious GPS, so... It really wasn't necessary. She wants to kill them because Johnny won't answer her calls. Probably because the asylum saved another ten bucks by not hiring anyone to play Johnny. I mean, those seas of titties don't pay for themselves now. So Mert calms her down by relaying tales of how he stole the DVDs and really liked them. I must have jacked off to him like ten times. Really? Yeah! Most guys would suck off an elephant's balls to get a chance at a smoking hot piece of ass like you. You are so nice. For the record, no, she isn't actually drunk or high yet. Now that she won't kill them, Mert picks her up to bring her along because... Uh... Now, oh, fuck it, just go with it. The point is they finally make it to the beach part... Uh... House... Party? There's probably a beach somewhere around there. Think we'll see any celebrities? Ooh. It's an asylum film. You'll probably see one, but it's not like they'll be relevant in Hollywood or anything. Oh, and the prostitutes are still kicking around because... I guess they wanted a lift here? Well, that's convenient. Anyway, Mert finds the two girls who invited them, but Spanky all of a sudden thinks they shouldn't put such arbitrary rules on how they should or should not lose their virginity. I have a girl already. The, the wrong fucking one, man. <laughs> yeah, why well, have consensual sex when you can just do that horribly disturbing drug and fuck thing you planned out? Oh yeah, litigation. Besides, old Spanky here has his own demon to slay. You can masturbate to me anytime. I don't want to masturbate anymore. Do you hear me? There is so much wrong with this scene, I have no idea where to start. Nevertheless, he leaves with Princess, which means Mert has the neighbor girls all to himself. Who then start furiously making out with him because sex weed takes half a second to take effect? And as we already saw, it changes your sexual orientation. But oh no, he suddenly doesn't have a hard-on, so he's got to run off and fix that. Why are these guys' erectile capabilities completely plot-driven? Mert's 18! All the erection problems I had when I was 18 had nothing to do with trying to get one. So in the quest for an erection, he doesn't take one of those pills he brought, but instead pulls out the big purple penis pump. Oh joy, I haven't seen this joke done in four dozen sex-themed comedies already. I'm not four baker's dozen, I guess. In a total twist turn of events, he pumps way beyond the recommended amount, and oh no, it gets stuck. How zany. Luckily, Pinky shows up to pull it off, and... My balls are in the tip of my dick! Right, okay, first of all, if that were the case, you'd never have to worry about sex again because you've just effectively castrated yourself. Second, why is it the only shot of a crotch in this whole movie is the guy's mutilated penis? I ain't sure there have been all these things with naked women with boobs flying around and kissing and cutting between all these parts, but it's kind of hard for me to enjoy that when they keep shoving disgusting things in my face in 3D. Again, predictably, Pinky has just the technique to make sure he's okay, which leads to them having sex. I think, uh, sex where you keep your underwear on at all times. Plus, there's a bunch of shots with topless women and spanky fucking princess and all that. <sighs> Honestly, 
At this point in the movie, I really don't care. That's far too hard to put smiley faces on. And I'm just worried about the next horrible thing they're going to show to me. Hold on, now there is something good coming up. The goddamn end! Oh, thank you. Spanky and Princess are now an item. No word on if she has a subscription fee. Mert instantly breaks up with Pinky, but when she shows up with gorilla shit, gets back together just as quickly. Did you? Yeah. You should know. You were there. It's the asylum. No surprise that I may happen to have issues with what's on display, but fucking shit cut fucking ass fuck! How do you screw up a movie this bad when the entire premise is doing drugs and having sex? I'm wondering if there exists something in this world the Asylum can't make somehow terrible. Not to say that it's their worst film. I shall repeat Alien Origin. But it's still got the classic slew of Asylum faults. The acting is meh at best. But what really kills character interaction is the writing. Character motivations in this movie make next to no sense, often going against basic exercises in logic just to progress the plot, and the attempts at humor range from tired, overdone tropes to just being fucking disgusting. That disgust obviously making the other selling point of this, the slew of mostly naked women, a hell of a lot harder to enjoy. Not to mention the 3D effect. While the depth was good as it was shot in 3D, the red-green method is absolutely hard for extended periods of time. Tip for the Asylum! An hour and a fucking half is one hell of an extended period of time! There are some good qualities here and there, but honestly, it's in comparison with some of the other crap the Asylum has put out. Being the least smelly turd isn't exactly a point of pride. And overall, Sex Pot tries to be the adolescent-targeted film exploiting two of life's classic vices, but not only do they throw in too much crap for the nudity to be that redeeming a quality, they also ignore near all of marijuana's actual effects in favor of one invented just for this movie, making it pointless to even bring up the plant. So if you desperately want titties and don't care what you have to do to see them, get a porno and do it right. I really don't see the reason this movie has to exist. Coming in at two overused penis pumps out of five. I should really stop watching these movies. Between this and Invasion of the Pod People, I'm going to start associating terrible acting and worse plots with breasts. I don't want that to happen. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, don't fuck your sister. It still counts! Be butt farmed in the slam by a guy named Tiny. Oh, you know Tiny?